Hey everyone, me Kevin here. What the heck happened to DocuSign today? Is this overblown? Is this oversold? And is this potentially just the symptom of nervousness in this market leading DocuSign to sell off like crazy? Take a look at this. Indice futures currently down about one third to one half of a percent uh, in the after hours here on December 2nd. Volatility index up about 3%. If we jump on over though to DocuSign, you can see the spy there starting to drop. Drop on over to DocuSign down 29% in the after hours. DocuSign is a company that I've had a price, uh, ideally a purchase price target of under 200 on. So I haven't really been buying DocuSign. I actually sold a little bit of DocuSign. And now we've got a 29% drop, much well below under 200. Uh, so well within where I originally thought that's kind of where I want to be buying it. It's at $165 right now. If you zoom out for a moment, you'll see that $165 takes you about out here to where this line is, we run on over. That brings us over to Q2 of 2020 pricing. That is absolutely insane. So how bad were the earnings? How bad were they to justify a nearly 30% sell-off? Well, folks, here's your answer. DocuSign's total revenue actually beat it came in with a beat, 545 million. This was uh, a beat. I'll tell you exactly what the beat was. Let me see here, earnings estimates. And uh, then we'll look at the guidance. So the estimate was 531 million. So we actually had a beat on revenue for this quarter. 531 was the expectation. So we beat by about 2.6% on revenue. We had a miss on billings. So net billings came in at 565. That is a miss of 3.7%. So you had revenue coming in at 2.7. You had billings coming in at a minus 3.7. And then you had guidance coming in about 2.5% short uh, on the downside here comparing to the midpoint. We were expecting uh, guidance to come in with revenue of about 574.2. We ended up coming in with a range of 557 to 563. So from the midpoint, that's about a negative 2.2.5%. So in other words, we beat on revenue by 2.7%, missed on billings by 3.7%, missed on guidance by 2.5%, and the stock is selling off about 10x that, or 30 frickin' percent. It's pretty wild. Let's take a look at some of the fundamentals here to see if this is something we should be long-term concerned about. So first thing that I noticed is that this particular quarter, the three months ending October, I did comparisons. I always like to compare to the last quarter. Now, in order to do that, I usually, because they, they like to give you a year over year comparison, which I don't like doing as much. So I had to pull up the other earnings for uh, Q2 of 2021, which is not a big deal, I did. So I pulled those up and I was able to see that subscription revenue actually increased by 7.2%. Their upsells weren't as strong. So their professional services were actually down 11%, but this is a nominal number here. They could literally have zero here and they'd still be growing their subscription revenue. This is a company that makes money from subscription revenues. So a 7.2% increase month, I'm sorry, quarter over quarter, not bad. That's actually, I mean, if, if a company was growing 7.2% per year, that'd still be pretty decent. But this is a 7.2% quarterly uh, uh, subscription increase that works out to about a 28.8% annual uh, growth rate in subscriptions, which is very good for the company. Slightly slower, though, than that 30 plus percent and even 40 percent that we've kind of been seeing in uh, in prior quarters, thanks to how much has been pulled forward to electronic signatures for COVID, which we'll talk more about that in a moment. Worth noting that international revenue came in at a 68 percent growth and now represents 23 percent of total revenue. I, I thought that was pretty interesting because personally, I don't love investing in international stocks because I have a really hard time understanding uh, circumstances in, in different countries. Like I love Embraer. I think it's a value play. I think it is uh, a much better deal than Boeing. But it's in Brazil where inflation's 10%. And I can't tell you when inflation's going to U-turn in, well, really anywhere, but, <laughs> uh, but certainly not in Brazil. Anyway, so taking a look a little bit more down here, subscription cost. This was interesting. In my opinion, this is actually a reason to be bullish here because the miss was nominal. But look at this potential reason to be bullish. Revenue in subscriptions was up 7.2%. 
but costs for servicing those subscriptions were actually flat compared to the last quarter. So you didn't see a 7% increase in revenue costs there, which in my opinion is very, very good. All of this, by the way, is helping contribute to the fact that they're taking $81.2 of gross profit for every $100 they make. So they make $100, they're taking $81.2 uh, to their OPEX, which it used to be closer to 79. So we're actually seeing marginal improvement here because it's costing them less to service their subscriptions and they're getting more subscriptions, which is a really good sign. This helps increase margin. Now the company does still spend an insane amount of money on sales. And there was even a reference in the earnings call to potentially the company pressuring their employees a little bit more leading to some not so great glass door reviews uh, uh, for the last quarter, though they still find that their reviews online are very, very, uh, very good. But take a look at this. I'm just reading some of your Glassdoor reviews here, which I know you take really seriously. And so it seems like Q3 was tough on your sales force. Uh, and uh, DocuSign executives responded here and said, hey, look, we have an incredibly high Glassdoor rating. You don't need to worry about that. But uh, they, they did seem to lament the fact a little bit that they weren't able to cross sell as well. So it's possible that's maybe where some executive frustration uh, did end up coming through. No excuse, obviously. You want to take care of your employees. The company is expected to be profitable next quarter, which is really, really exciting because it's a big U-turn for DocuSign. You can see here it's just been losing a little less than uh, a, a dollar per share uh, regularly here. Uh, right now we're only at three cents of a loss. So if we can turn this to a profit next quarter and get back on track, maybe beat these lower estimates, uh, I think this uh, this particular company has a really good U-turn potential, especially since we're, we're selling at a relatively lower, substantially lower valuation than where we were before. I agree that when DocuSign crossed 300, the valuation was ridiculous. But if we go ahead and jump out to 2025, which is typically what we're going to do for these growth companies, you're, at, you're probably going to end up looking at revenue of somewhere around $4.3 billion. And we're probably going to be looking at an EPS of somewhere around 3.55. And so if you take 3.55, uh, or actually take the current share price, which is now on sale at 165, divide it by 3.55 you're gonna be sitting at a forward PE of about 46.4, which is substantially better than what this used to sit at. I mean, this was this used to look very, very, very ugly. We're even expecting in 2022, which is next year, to be at almost half of that, 1.75. So even if we only go out to, one, uh, for, to 2022, we're sitting at about a 94 PE. And for a company with the growth that we're seeing now, 2022, expecting somewhere around 43, so hoping we can get back on that growth trajectory, which remember, if for 2022, we're expecting 43% growth, we're going to have to be growing a whole lot more than 7%, right? We're going to have to be growing like 10% a quarter, 10 to 10.1% a quarter. So we are going to have to bump that up a little bit. That's why I think there's some nervousness here in Q3. Hey, how are we possibly going to meet those 2022 and beyond estimates? But we do forecast, at least Wall Street uh, analysts forecast, that will have growth that'll settle closer to the mid 20s of percent by 2025. And so this, in my opinion, puts this at a normal sort of profitable growth play or soon to be profitable growth play. And the valuation for the kind of growth we're expecting, it's high, but it's not ridiculous relative to some other companies. Uh, so let's just go ahead and compare a little bit. Let's look at Snowflake, for example. Let's go with the 2022 and 2025. Let's write this down. So here, we'll add a little page here and we'll write this down. So that way we can do a little bit of relative comparison because I think that's always the thing that people go to is when a stock falls, you're like, oh, the valuation is so high. Meanwhile, they've probably never done the math on the PE ratios or anything and probably don't even understand what the PE ratio actually means. So we're gonna write this down at 2022. Uh, we'll do 96 here and 2025 will be 46. Let's do a snowflake and just using Wall Street's estimates here. For snowflake, uh, we are expecting, uh, let's see, they're at about 360 bucks divided by only about 45 cents. With snowflake, you wanna talk valuation, folks. Look at snowflake, 2025, you're expecting an 800 PE. Okay, let's do another one here. Let's do one that's maybe a little closer, like Upstart. Upstart's profitable, so I like Upstart. There uh, is certainly a different style of service, but let's jump into 
upstart. So upstart, you're looking at a projected, I only have 2022 here, unfortunately. I don't have a 2025. So, and Snowflake's gonna be negative, so infinite in 2022. So 2022 is gonna be negative. We do not have a 2025, so I'll just put null for this. We don't have estimates. 2022 for upstart, we're gonna be looking at probably $2.45 closed at 177, so 245 divided by, there we go, it puts us about 72. So it shows you upstart with its recent larger sell-off, kind of more pay, potentially in the direction of maybe where DocuSign might end up going, uh, which that'd be another little bit of compression here in the stock price, right? So there's definitely still the potential for software valuation compression, and this is what we've talked about on the channel as of about three weeks ago, that we're probably going to see software valuations compress going forward. Uh, that's upstart, although I do think upstart's potentially a little bit on the oversold side. Uh, trying to think of a company that's maybe not as uh, as mature as let's say a company like Adobe, but it might be worth comparing to Adobe just because they also do uh, e-signing products for what it's worth. They're expecting uh, $24 of EPS in 2025. So we divide that, you're gonna be, see you're only at about 11, right? So this is a mature company like uh, Adobe 2025 valuation or PE of about 11, but their growth is would be expected to be a lot lower, growth of around 11 to 13%. That's why I think really looking for a software company that might be a little closer here. I don't think Roblox is on a path to uh, profitability just yet. So we might go with a Palantir where we've also seen a substantial, yeah, no real path to profitability for Roblox yet. Ah, 2025, okay, actually 2025, a buck 85. Divide that by about 116, buck 85. Roblox would be about 62. So we'll throw down Roblox here, 62 for about 2025. That's probably a good comparison. And let's maybe do one more here. Let's go with Palantir. Let's see what we got for Palantir, just so you can kind of see where DocuSign sits valuation wise. Palantir, 2020, ah, we only go out to 2022, sadly. And so we'll be at about 20 cents there. So 20 divided by, well, 20 is about 100. So you're sitting at about, you're sitting at a similar valuation as Palantir right now. So if you think DocuSign is overvalued, you probably think that Palantir is uh, overvalued as well, given that you've got roughly the same valuation for Palantir as you do DocuSign. And both of them are expected to have about that 30% growth for the next three years going forward. So this gives you a little bit of an idea that obviously compared to a much more mature company like Adobe, where you're gonna have softer growth in the future, it feels overvalued. Uh, for, for a company that's a little newer, growing more, potentially growing more substantially, Palantir, DocuSign seem like a good comparison. Unless, of course, you really wanted to compare to something like, uh, let's try PayPal just for giggles. We're moving into a different kind of industry here. But yeah, if you think DocuSign's overvalued, then stay far away from Snowflake, and then you probably also think that Palantir is overvalued. But anyway, just do a quick comparison here because I actually like PayPal. I think PayPal is definitely on the oversold side, and you've got some more value over here. PayPal's growth will probably be a little less, closer to like 19% in 2025, but uh, you're only paying about, uh, what is that, 187 divided by 10, you're only paying about 18.7 times for 2025 here. So it gives you an idea. I personally like having a balance when I invest in companies, uh, so that way I have a little bit uh, of exposure to companies that maybe have a little bit of a higher valuation, which DocuSign does, it's not ridiculous like what you see at Snowflake, and it has much more growth than something like Adobe, but I also like companies like PayPal, where I do have growth, but I've got that lower uh, forward PE that we're looking at. So that gives you a little bit of an idea here. Let's also now just look at a few more things that came up in the earnings call just to make sure I'm covering everything here. So uh, this was probably the most key phrase right here, and that was in Q3, we saw demand slow and the urgency of customer buying patterns temper, and this happened more quickly than we expected. So uh, unfortunately, that throws a little bit of doubt onto their potential forecasts into the future. Uh, it is a company that I bought the dip in a little bit, 
which remember you always get my buy sell alerts linked down below in the programs with that Cyber Monday uh, coupon code ending this Friday. But uh, this is a company that I probably won't have as a massive portion of my portfolio. It's a company I like in my portfolio, but it probably end up being something more like a one to two percenter in the portfolio. Maybe I'd get this up to about three percent if we see a bit more of a dip tomorrow. Probably if we saw positive news on jobs, positive news on some of the catalysts coming out over the next 24 hours to two weeks, I'd probably purchase pick up a little bit more DocuSign, but I would offset that by making sure I invested in other companies that had those lower valuations going forward. Uh, specifically, my favorites really being more hardware plays, uh, whether that's, uh, or FinTech plays. So PayPal, Square, SoFi, companies like this. SoFi could actually be a decent comparison because there are a lot of SoFi bulls that, and I think in fairness, you may as well just do a quick SoFi comparison. So SoFi uh, right now barely has a path to profitability, expecting about 64 cents of rev in 2025, uh, profitable in 2023, divided by 0.64, puts them at about 25.6 times uh, for 2025. So it, it shows you SoFi sold off nicely to where you're getting that lower Ford P about 25.6. Again, over here, you're still paying about 46 for it. So you're still on a little bit of the upper side. Okay, good. Uh, the global sales aspect, I really like, really appreciate being able to have some growth in global markets. I think that's phenomenal. One of the things that I really love is that they're really working on their SMS and uh, really identification processes. So that way you could do virtual signings for more documents. Specifically, this is something I'm most excited about because I'm so tired of getting these people coming to my house in person and having to pay for them. DocuSign Notary. That's a game changer for a notaries, potentially for their business in the future, but also uh, just the amount of ease and the willingness that you'd want to uh, pay for uh, a service with DocuSign. I mean, I'd rather pay DocuSign 20 bucks and they could split it with a notary than have to go meet a notary and pay 200 bucks for a mobile notary or something like that. But anyway, uh, you've got uh, Google, Microsoft partnering with them, more uh, uh, partnerships with Salesforce. They're convinced the growth opportunity for DocuSign remains largely untapped. Obviously, this is what they're saying. Uh, margin increases, you move, uh, removing the COVID tailwind a little bit, they talked about. Uh, talked about a lot of uh, verticals that they could still go through uh, to make sure that they expand their sales. A lot of opportunities to go. And 63% billing growth from Q3 of last year. It's very, very incredible. It's still very good growth. But again, we want to make sure that growth come back, comes back. So you're making a bet with DocuSign that growth is going to come back here in this, this winter time frame for next quarter. Hopefully, people spend a lot of money on their, uh, you know, their, their signups towards the end of the year. <laughs> so that way uh, you get more DocuSign customers and they get their tax write off, right? Net retention actually doing very well, still at 121%. They don't publish churn, but this is higher than the historical range of 114 to 119. This just means they're able to upsell their customers a little bit more. And then we talked a little bit about the glass store commentary and that's it. So this gives you a little bit of an idea into what the heck is happening happening at DocuSign. Also gives you a bit of a relative valuation. So you have kind of an understanding of where they compare to valuation wise. DocuSign very much like a Palantir, uh, much lower valuation than a Snowflake, but not as good as something like a PayPal, a SoFi or an Adobe. Uh, valuation wise. So anyway, it could be because you still have a lot of COVID traders in it who as COVID goes away will end up trading out of DocuSign. That's a very real risk and uh, it is a, a potential cause for shorter term concern. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully this was very helpful and insightful for you. If it was, consider uh, smashing that like button, sharing the video, check out the programs down below and folks, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks again, goodbye.